If you were to make a list of the most important things a cat would need, the list of essentials, safety and security would be near the very top. And when it comes to your neighborhood, knowing if it's the right location for your cat to live is very important, especially if you're entertaining the notion of allowing the cat to roam outdoors, whether it be your backyard or the neighborhood as a whole. And while there's no such thing as a guarantee, even when it comes to safety within inside of your home, once you do open that door, all bets are certainly off. This is why it becomes all the more important that your neighborhood is, at the very least, accommodating for your feline and as safe as possible. In this material, we'll talk about several factors, things that you can strive to look for, ways to judge if your neighborhood is safe for your pet. Interesting topic and hopefully a beneficial one. I've got you covered. Stay tuned. In no particular order, no specific order, here's my personal list of things to consider with respect to your neighborhood or even potential neighborhood, and if the great outdoors in that area is fit for a feline. First off, given that we are talking about a neighborhood setting, let's talk about some level of fencing, the property boundaries. I feel that it's very important, at least to some degree, to have proper fencing. Now, if your objective is to make sure that your cat doesn't leave your property at all, you're going to need something quite tall. <laughs> Not to mention uh, a fence that your cat can't climb. Okay, uh, well that's likely for another video, but, <laughs> but it's going to take something a bit more than your standard fence to say the least. However, for this presentation, when I speak of fencing, I'm mainly, mainly talking about uh, outsiders coming in, predators coming in, because while cats can jump and climb with ease, and with the best of them, not everything else can. And having an open season type backyard, that could be asking for trouble. So, that backyard, make sure that it passes the security test, not so much as it relates to your cat leaving, but to those critters coming in, the possums and the raccoons. They can navigate a fence, but they'll be more inclined to think twice if they've got some work to do in order to get on the property. Oh, and a bit of an FYI, at the end of each day, make sure that any and all cat food or cat treats have been cleared from your backyard from the property. Varmints, especially at night, they're not likely to come around too often or continue to come around if it's been established that there's just nothing to eat. Just a friendly piece of advice there, and I say that from very personal experience. Next, let's talk about the neighbors in your neighborhood. The closer uh, the proximity, it's the better. At least in my view, if your cat is going to roam, it's best to have them roam in immediate areas where other homes are close, other people are close. This way your cat can go somewhere without really going somewhere. This can act as a bit of a safety measure and also a peace of mind measure for you. The literal closeness of the homes in the neighborhood, that's a safety factor to consider. And speaking of close neighbors, let's talk about dogs. <laughs> big dogs, big dogs in the backyard all hours of the day and night. Unfortunately, what I just mentioned about the safety of neighbors, well, that water can turn a bit muddy in the backyard, both on the left and right of you, if the neighbors have dogs. If your cat were to hop the fence, they could find themselves behind, unfortunately, behind enemy lines. Now, while there will be likely dogs, at least somewhere in the neighborhood, for safety purposes, having a few homes free of outdoor dogs on either side of your home, it can act as a bit of a buffer, just in case your cat gets a bit too curious for comfort. Of course, if we're talking dogs, let's talk cats. I've yet to see a neighborhood anywhere that didn't have a cat, some degree, some level of cats. However, you don't want a neighborhood to be swarming with cats, especially if you're bringing a new cat into your home or you're moving into a new neighborhood. Those territory battles, it's just what cats do. And if your cat gets involved in those already claimed areas, that's just some trouble that your cat doesn't need and trouble that you don't need as an owner. The outdoor fun time for your cat will sour in a hurry if each day is a series of confrontations with various cats over, let's call it, property rights. Not to mention random cats jumping your fence into your property, with your cat having to do the heavy lifting and making sure the backyard remains free of conflict. Well, how about a change of pace? How about some peace and quiet? That brings me to my next factor, the next judgment, if you will, with respect to a safe neighborhood for your cat. 
your neighborhood. It needs to be relatively calm and quiet, at least within reason. No constant partying and carrying on, no late night nonsense at three in the morning. This isn't a frat house, it's your neighborhood. The last thing you want is for your cat when outdoors, or indoors for that matter, to feel anxious and uneasy over loud and unexpected sounds. If every night feels like New Year's Eve, that might not be the neighborhood for your pet. And speaking of commotion, let's talk about vehicles. Let's talk traffic. Cats. Outdoor felines, they love their backyards, the brush and the wooded areas. But they also love to dart out into the street and cross the street. Your neighborhood needs to be a place where drivers respect the area. The vehicles, they either need to be folks who live in the neighborhood or guests. Familiar guests, if possible. At least the majority of folks, they need to check those boxes. If your neighborhood is simply a shortcut for public traffic to get from point A to point B, that can be bad news. Well, why? Well, the shortcutters, they're going to be far more interested in using your street as a means of knocking off time on their drive than they're going to be, uh, they're not going to be too much concerned with pets crossing the road. If your neighborhood seemingly doubles for regular public traffic, that could be a big red flag. If your goal is outdoor safety for your cat. Next up, let's talk environment. Terrain. What's the outside really looking like? Is there a few of nature's pitfalls for your cat? Accidents and injuries just waiting to happen? If there is an easy exit from your public road, from, the, from the, your neighborhood to the public road, uh, speaking of traffic, while you can't control everything, you can take stock. Make sure there's nothing glaring around the neighborhood that could cause injury. And to round things out for this topic and my personal list, early on I mentioned the physical proximity of your neighbors, the closeness of their actual homes, and relation to yours, well, that's the physical structure of things. However, when talking safety, let them, the people, let them know personally. Let everyone know that you have a cat, a feline that will indeed be roaming outdoors from time to time. This way, if your pet hops that fence and is roaming your neighbor's yard, it won't be a nervous time for you, your neighbor. They'll know what's up and they won't be wondering, whose cat is that? And all the normal questions. Some level of extended family is really the goal here. Should your cat leave your yard for another property? You can have someone who knows your cat and will, in their own way, be on the lookout, looking out for them a bit, uh, be their safety net, just to keep an eye on things. This way, when you say, hey, my cat's gone, have you seen old Garfield? They can say, yeah, I saw him two houses down visiting Mr. Jones. Your immediate neighbor knows your cat, and Mr. Jones does too. Also, just letting folks know that you have a cat, it's a safety measure, but it's also an approval measure. In some ways, your neighbors won't be potentially annoyed by your roaming cat if they have always known them, and they certainly knew in advance of the roaming. <laughs> Chances are, if we're honest, their cats are doing pretty much the same. Strength in numbers, roaming cats, yet doing it all under the same umbrella, that's a good safety plan. So there you go. My voice was a little messed up for this video, so <laughs> we didn't mind too much. Ways to judge and factors to consider with respect to selecting a safe neighborhood for your cat, at least the safest within reason, of course. To the audience of Senior Cat Wellness, anything you'd like to add to this list? What factors have you considered? Did you consider? Are you still considering? <laughs> if someone were to ask you, what defines a good neighborhood for a cat? What would you say? Hmm, your thoughts, your stories, your additions to this topic, the comments section, it's all yours. And if you enjoyed this content, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you as a member of the Senior Cat Wellness family. And until next time, thank you so very much for watching, and I will talk to you later.